Hi, welcome to Lagoons Do It Better TV, where we give you bite-sized segments that help your lagoon do it better. I'm your host, Patrick Hill, and my co-host here, Brady O'Leary. We're here today to talk about lagoon sludge, specifically what are the causes of lagoon sludge, what are the effects, and how might this affect uh, your, your operations, maybe with ammonia or maybe with BOD. Yeah, so with lagoon sludge, you know, it's a normal part of what, how lagoons operate. You know, lagoons are designed with a certain amount of sludge storage in them. The problems come when you get to that kind of 18 to 24 inches type of range, you know. And, and when you get up there, that's when you can have lagoon uh, issues with your sludge. Some problems you might see are benthyl feedback or feedback of stuff you don't want coming from the lower end or areas of your pond. Uh, floating sludge, odor, algae proliferation, low DO, a lot of pretty nasty issues. Yeah, and, and most of this comes from that menthol feedback, like mm -hmm. you mentioned. And really what that is, is that's anaerobic digestion of sludge occurring on the bottom of the lagoon. And, and this can cause a lot of issues. And, and one of the things you'll notice, a telltale sign, is that you'll see popping sludge. You'll see floating sludge on the surface. And what happens is, you know, you get this buildup of gas, right? And, and it's, it's when anaerobic digestion occurs, you get H2S. H2S gets underneath that sludge and it f helps it float to the surface. Yep, and you know, a telltale sign of sludge at the bottom of your lagoon is bubbles. If your lagoon looks like a little bit of a cauldron boiling all the time, mm -hmm. you've got some an anaerobic digestion going on down there. Um, benthyl feedback in general, as Pat mentioned, can release stuff back into your water column. Uh, this can be, it can release BOD back into the water column, it can release TSS, especially if you have sludge popping uh, from the bottom, it can release ammonia, and it can release phosphorus. In fact, we've seen uh, in a final unaerated cell of a wastewater lagoon, uh, with water coming in that's pretty much treated for BOD and treated for ammonia, we'll see essentially zero values going into the lagoon and significantly higher values, two, three, five, ten 10 milligrams a liter coming out that's benthyl feedback. That's crazy. And you think about that, you know, it, it, your lagoon is actually adding ammonia sometimes. And, and you see these things happen. The other thing it can do is it can uh, throw your pH balance off, right? So if you've got anaerobic digestion, uh, you, get, you get septic conditions. You've got septic conditions, you can get higher or lower pH, which the bugs don't like. So that affects your ammonia treatment, that affects your BOD treatment. It's a big problem. Mm -hmm. And another issue uh, that can be caused by the ex excess situations that Pat talked about uh, is the fact that this sludge displaces water in your water, water column. If you have a 10 foot deep lagoon, you've got four feet of sludge, you've really got a six foot deep lagoon. And when that happens, you have less retention time. Basically, the water sits out there for less time, which means less treatment. So if you have a lot of sludge, you're probably seeing uh, worse numbers coming out of the back, uh, back end of your system because uh, it's, it's, uh, you know, it's compromised. Right, so I mean, and really what this, what sludge is most of the time, it's really just undigested BOD, mm -hmm. right, in a, in a lot of cases. So what that can do is that drives down your DO level, right? It can suck DO out of the water. And as it's releasing this H2S, it can cause a lot of odor issues. So, you know, you talk about lagoons are stinky sometimes. Well, they're stinky a lot of times because of lagoon sludge. So when you think about, you know, designing an aeration system for a lagoon, for example, you know, you can't just think about the BOD coming in. You got to think about the BOD coming in plus the BOD that's already there in the sludge, plus DO that you need just to have, you know, some some buffer in there, right? And so it can really if, if you don't have any of that stuff built into your system, it really drives down DO and causes odor issues. Mm -hmm. And some of you out there might be thinking, I've got I know I've got sludge out there or I've got popping sludge or I've got benthyl feedback. What do I do about it? And well, the first step is you got to measure it, right? I mean, you got to know what you're dealing with. And then you also got to take a core sample, right? Because some sludge is what we call volatile sludge. That's stuff that can be broken down organically. And some of it's just, you know, it, it, it's, um, uh, you know, sand and grit, non-volatile, inorganic type sludge, mm -hmm. right? And that really is not a lot you can do about that. So uh, you got to understand what the ratio of volatile to non-volatile sludge is. Mm -hmm. And this data is absolutely critical for, your, for planning for wastewater, your whole facility moving forward. Uh, one of our core values here at Triple Point is good data, good decisions. And you can't really address a problem if you don't know what it is. So those samples are key. Uh, and, and if you decide to do something with um, this, this sludge, say you decide to have a contractor remove it, these samples are critical to figuring out how much that's going to cost. How many cubic yards of sludge do we have to remove? It's also really good to help keep these uh, contractors or service providers accountable. Uh, you know you've got X hundred cubic yards of sludge that you want to remove and you're going to remove 80% of it, you can test, you take those test values from before and subtract out the test values later to figure out what was actually performed. So the data is very, very key. 
And let's say, you know, in some cases you find that, you know, 50% of your sludge is what we call volatile, you know, and you've got, let's say, two feet total. Well, if you can break down that volatile sludge, right, and reduce it down, then you can maybe gain another foot of water column, and that could avoid you having to de-sludge for maybe another 10 years even. So there's really two ways to do that. You can do that by adding beneficial bacteria that actually break down the sludge, just adding more bugs in there, and we've seen that work, or you can add aeration, and aeration and mixing, that'll help to recirculate some of these solids into the water column and help them to break down uh, with oxygen, mm -hmm. right, which is exactly what they want and what they need. Yeah, aeration and mixing is great. And if you decide to look into the bacteria route, we've seen data to suggest that you can get up to 30% removal uh, just by adding this bacteria. So that's a pretty big deal. Uh, if you do use beneficial bacteria, you have to be careful. Some bacteria are great for your lagoon and some bacteria might not be so good. So if you have somebody bringing this to the table and saying, hey, try my bacteria, make sure you get a written guarantee so that the success of this individual is tied into your success. So that's all about all we have time for today uh, to talk about sludge. Uh, you know, our, our Mars aeration system is, is an aerator that can help mix and aerate at the same time, which does help to break down and promote the breakdown of sludge on the bottom of your lagoon. So that's an option for you. If you want some more information, go to our website, tpenv.com, and look up our Mars system. We've had a lot of success with it. We've done it for a very long time now. Also, if you're looking for more videos or are interested in, in learning more about wastewater lagoons, check out uh, uh, our Lagoons Do It Better section on, on YouTube. You can subscribe there. You can also go to our Lagoons Do It Better Facebook group. Where we're fostering a community of like-minded people who believe that lagoons do it better. Uh, actually, if you go to that website Pat mentioned, tpenv.com slash LDIB, Lagoons Do It Better, uh, and you subscribe to our, our, uh, our, our processes here, uh, we are offering a Mossy Oak Flex Fit hat here. I don't know if you want to wear that. Also, if you've got any questions that you want us to answer about your lagoon system, comment on this YouTube post, uh, go to our website, contact us. We love getting questions from people out in the field. We're all about helping lagoons do it better. So thanks for joining us today, and uh, we'll see you next time. See ya.